I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of your first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you earned doubled. All the cash back from eating at your favorite soup dumpling restaurant doubled. All the cash back from that trip where you sort of learned to snowboard also doubled. And the best part, you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it. Nope. Discover does it automatically. Seriously, though, see terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com slash match. Whether you're searching for that latest sneaker, the iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. Yup, we're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that makes the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get that piece you always wanted, and leave it up to the meticulous eyes of an eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather, and never get faked over again. In the world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay Authenticity Guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Let's go. Right or wrong? <laughs> What's poppin' people, you know what time it is Welcome back to Say Less with Kaz Yeah Low key What up though And usually we would say Rosie But Rosie's a little tardy she today She's on one train so and She'll pop in when she's Here's the thing Low Like when we put like these podcast episodes together right yep, Like right. we'll either shoot the shit And usually like we have like one guest Maybe You know what I'm saying And yeah. we'd all research And yeah. like get ready for it And then yeah. it was like Alright when we got two guests, yeah. it's usually much more of a, all right, so we're just going to shoot the shit. We're just yeah. going yeah. to shoot the breeze of the that, fellas, that's, right? that's, 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 I think now it's like a clubhouse. This it's is kind of yeah. what it's feeling it's like right, it's right now. Clubhouse, you know I mean? like, <laughs> yeah, it's a clubhouse, man. We ain't yeah. bleak and trade We're really no, in no, it now. Rosie will be here in a minute, yeah, but it's, right. it's, we, like most, it's like most things that happen before like the girls come in, right? We could talk to most each other, and then it's like, I act like real gentlemanly. I was just fucking with y'all. You know what time it is? Uh, subscribe YouTube.com slash Kazim. You could listen to our podcast everywhere. You stream them. Amazon, Apple, Snapchat. Snapchat. Spotify. Uh, <laughs> SoundCloud, Spotify. All that good Snapchat. shit. But this is a fun-ass episode today, right? Because yeah. we are we are blessed to have two incredibly young, black, talented actors, yes. comedians, just incredible to the culture right now, and right. I just can't believe they they're here. Like they're bro, it's it's, 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 it's like the it's stars kind of aligned so crazy right. because right. uh, this week their movie The Blackening uh, hits theaters yes. uh, with an incredible, uh, incredible cast, cast and talent of young black stars yes. on TV, movies, all that, yes. and we're joined by two of them right now. We got Shinqua Wallace and Melvin. Greg joining us on the podcast. Let's go, today. let's go, let's go. Man, let's listen, we I, we talk a lot of different shit on this show, right? Yeah. And this movie, The Blackening, from off the, off the rip of the title, I'm intrigued, right? Like I'm like, all right, yeah. Because you know, anytime I, anytime we watch anything in, in in movies and the culture, all that type of stuff, when you put like. All right, here come the movie with all the niggas in it. We got, you know, we got how, how are we gonna be represented? How is this gonna feel like? Because it was know, what it was represented like. How all black people look at horror movies. That's you know what it is. And it was just like a mirror of. Like, I think. I think now more than ever. Y'all saw it already? Huh? Y'all saw it? Yeah, we had the screen. I saw. Oh, I saw. Oh, yeah, we had, I saw. We had, we had, I, saw the, I saw the first time. Yeah, of it, but I didn't finish it yet. I didn't finish it yet. I said I like I that honest answer. answer. That's honest. real. No, that's I'm real. Real. I love that, bro. Talking about the lead up to this movie, right? I want to hear. I'm telling you the lead up to this movie, right? So when you hear it, I think. Oh, you got to talk to the Okay, bro. I would say that now more than ever. People consume media not just by themselves, like mm -hmm. with social media also, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So whether it's like Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. even still black Twitter, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like there's there's always a lens through which stuff is sort of like filter. View. Filter, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I think it's so interesting that y'all both are on this show because I think y'all have been through it in very different ways, For right? Sure. Like mm -hmm. White Man Can't Jump yeah. is a 
a remake of a of a cult classic. Yeah. You know what I mean? That we all grew up in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yourself with, with Snowfall and and even Black with, as uh, fuck. Black as fuck. Yeah. And even uh with this movie, The Blackening, it's a it's a different take on scary movie. Like the scary, like almost the genre that the Wayne's brothers, Damon Wayne's, all those guys yeah. like really kind of brought to us. Yeah. Black horror, but it's comedy, yeah. and it's also like spoofing certain. It's, yeah, it's yeah. mocking, things, but it's right? still like a serious aspect. To yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it parody. Is is more so satirical in a sense. Satirical. Where, That's yeah, a better it word. challenges tropes. It would be so. Scary movie is a parody. You know what I mean? Like, they redo shit that's done yes. in a comedic way and reaching for comedy. This is challenging the tropes that we typically see in horror movies, mm-hmm. but in an honest way, and that's where the comedy comes from. If I had to compare it to something more so than the Wands, I would probably say, like, a Hollywood shuffle yeah. um, back in the day because um, he just challenges, the, he challenged the tropes that he saw in um, in Hollywood, and, that, and that's what we're doing uh, for the for the horror genre. Shout out to Robert Townsend, by the way. Yeah. Oh, like, when, so I mean, that's, I think that's such a great comparison, Legend. too, because... Like you said, like it is, it is that idea of not a parody, but like satirical and, and intelligent. And like I love when we first entered entered into the conversation. Yeah, and you're like, what is this gonna be? Yeah, like yeah. we see a bunch of us. Is it gonna be this or is it yeah. gonna be that? And yeah, because y'all don't. I, I feel like just young black artists don't get to just perform. Nah. Yeah, it's like it's all this extraness that comes with it. And yeah, it's like, right. All right we gotta, and we ain't got to do the shucking jiving. Yeah. And right. The beauty of this is is it's culturally accurate in a way where it feels like us. It doesn't yeah. feel like it's written by you know a 60, 70 year old white guy who's right. trying to sound cool and hip and you know what I mean and swag like and drip jokes, type you know, someone know else I mean? it, was, voice. it was somebody who has an accurate voice and depiction of the characters within the story yeah. so, so but both of y'all acting careers I'm glad you brought that up you know what I mean because you could tell I, I, I'm being honest I only saw the first half of it yeah. but, as I'm, <laughs> but as I'm listening to it and Yo, watching throw the second it, half up I'm like <laughs> I guess, I guess <laughs> watch the other half yeah. but, I, but it's one of those things that I saw and I immediately knew Niggas wrote this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like Black Fools were a part of it. Yeah. You guys have had, you know, the rising careers in Hollywood already that sure. you've already know what it's deal, what it's like to be in uh sets that aren't like that. Yes. When right. you when you have to work with people that you absolutely know that don't know your I, voice. I don't know your voice, yeah, don't know right. where you come from right. and all yeah. that. Yeah. How do you get to maneuver through that and still be able to do work like you've done with White Man Can Jump with Snowfall, the blackening, and and all that. You know what's interesting, man, is I think that, and I was talking about it earlier today. I think, as I, I would say, probably for both of us, as we progress, like we're just two authentic people. Yeah. And I feel like in this cultural climate that we live in now, authenticity sells more than ever before. Mm-hmm. And regardless of, I, I think the biggest thing is to make sure that like you don't change who you are in any space of conversation. Right. So when I walk into a room, at least for me, when I'm on set with anybody, mm-hmm. my conversation doesn't change whether I'm talking to Melvin or someone that's white or whoever, mm-hmm. and I make sure that my authenticity sells. And if you like it, cool, then we'll love together. Yeah. And if you don't like it, well, I'm sorry because I'm not going to shift up. And I think that's where value and currency is built from now. Mm. And what we want to see as an audience is authentic voices. That's yeah. why, like, when we're talking about the blackening, right, mm. when we're talking about these new renditions of stories, it's because there's an authentic voice that's coming across now. Yeah. And, you know, just at the end of the day, for me, the way I just was brought into this world as a man mm. is don't switch up. Okay. No matter who I'm talking to. So, so let's, let's dive into a little bit more of that, right? Yeah. So, you know me. I'm a, I'm an 80s baby. A lot of people that watch the show or consume our content are 80s babies. Yeah. You're in a movie of, of a remake of something I grew up with. Let's go. Right? Mm-hmm. To my heart, I'm like, yeah. Okay. Man, so like, nigga, yeah, I, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Wanna, I want to have this conversation. It, exactly. Let's, let's, let's right. have, yes, yes. Have you immediately have your own. Y'all don't gone. know that, like, y'all got three, like, we all were up for the same role. Like, hey, y'all got three people in this room that were all up for the same I role. Said, like, my brothers were here. Like, we were all talking to each other about what the heck is going on right now. So, tell me about the problem. Was Jack Harlow already attached to it? And we were like, we're going to find... Out the gate. Oh, out he the was, gate. So it was already with him. Well, Jack actually, yeah. Dicky was... Don't say that. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Early in the process, they had an eye on... They was like, right, oh, he was right, cool. right. <laughs> but things didn't go that way. And then Jack Harlow had his... You know what I mean? His his meteoric rise. Yes. And it was like, oh, he would be great. And, you know what I mean? But wait, as far oh, as oh shit, mind blown. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. No, so, that's, that's just early. So early right, conversation. I got it. Okay, okay, okay. No, go, go, go. Do you want? That's it. It was oh. early conversation. <laughs> but then from there, uh, Jack was a, since since I heard it become a reality as far as them reading. Or stuff Jack has been attached. Okay, right. okay, gotcha, gotcha. Right, gotcha, right, gotcha. right, 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 okay. right, right, right. Now, right. I was just, I'm just, I was just 
My mom. Wait, went what was the question? Was, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. So, <laughs> what was the what was the process like to 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 get that role and knowing this is an IP that people are so have such an attachment to, you know what I'm saying, about not, like, ruining the legs. Because I watched right. it, and I think I think it was it was a lot better re- received than I thought you it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, you know what's funny? I thought you know what's crazy about that? Like, man, I thought what, I, what I, I, thought I love I about it is that I'm the fact. It tall. No, I wanted, like, and that, and that's why, like, first thing when I wa- first walked in, I was like, this feels like a barbershop. Like, yeah. I just walked in, and, like, yeah. I'm just sitting with my boys, and we yeah. just having a real, that, real this is, this is the conversation. conversation. Yes. <laughs> and I think the thing that, it, that I'm proud of is that when people watch it, they realize how different it is and I think what I wish we did more of was tell people it was a reboot more than a remake yes so yes. people could independently ingest it and not be not have a preconceived notion I don't, I don't think it would have mattered because you don't think tell it? them it was a reboot the house party and niggas was like <laughs> this house party. man look hey I'm gonna be real so, like so, but you know what's funny they don't know the difference they, they really they don't, don't but like when people watch it and they go man like I've been grateful that when people watch it they go surprisingly yeah yeah, it was really good. Now, does, right. It's not like, what does, I does thought. That feel like a backhanded compliment a little bit. No, like I think little, it's. I think it's. Bit. We like we all grew up playing ball. We of all grew course. up poopers, and we're real people. So of at course. the end of the day, it's like walking into. I, that's why I said coming into this experience. My my whole goal was to make sure that I honored the legacy that was created before me because For sure. I personally loved the film. Right? Yeah. I love those actors. Yeah. Right? And so when we were doing it, my thing every day was like I understood the the, the monkey on the back. So when right. people were coming in, going like. Man, I'm not rocking with you. man. I'm like, I get you. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Like, I'm. It's, that's why for me, every time it was like, okay, how can we make these scenes better? Right. The basketball has to be real. Right. Like, what's the authenticity here? Because I know Jack would always do this impersonation of me. I would come in every day, and if we weren't really like, if everyone wasn't really focused, I'd be like, man, come on, man, let's lock in, y'all. You know what we up against? Yeah. Yeah. And he did it one time. on said he was like, <laughs> he just leaned in the hood. He was like, you know what we up against? I looked. I said, is that a impersonation of me? He was like, every day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you come in every day going, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's, that's the mentality to have, though, Bro, because you're, you're a human being, and, like, if I'm somebody who grew up on House Party and White Man Can Jump, yes. mm. and I'm thinking, like, man, you got to have the mentality, like, how can I not just honor the legacy of Perfect. this shit, and, and but not make myself look crazy? I'm not look crazy, and, and yeah. The thing, the thing is, too, is, like, people got to understand, a lot of people be like, oh, why they keep remaking stuff? Leave it alone, leave it alone. But Hollywood is a is a business, yes. it's yes. an industry, and the, and the business side of it is pre-existing IP already holds value because yes. people know what the name is, so mm. they'll come to see it because they it's familiar. Versus if that movie was called Hooping on a Wednesday, nobody was nobody watching. Watch exactly, nobody watching. So, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like it's like the correlation. It might have, it might have got a few more thumbs up, but was it right. going to make the bottom line? Or is it yeah, going to come money? People not going to tap in, and, exactly. and the Hollywood knows that, so. They'll be more likely to um, green light something with a pre existing IP because it has built in marketing Mm -hmm. than something completely new. So the expectations are already high because a lot of times these are classics. And to be completely honest, the classics, most of the time, they didn't do great box office numbers when they dropped. They became box office, they became Mm -hmm. hits later. And then another thing, too, is like like you were saying, it was better received than you expected. You got to understand, too, art is subjective. It might not have been for us because we remember the original mm, right. White Man Can't Jump. Maybe it's for the younger generation right. who didn't get it, that same generation who was online like, yo, I really fuck with this because they didn't have that comparison. That they didn't walk in with anything. Yeah, that, that shit is nostalgic to yeah, us right. that can't be recreated. Right. But yeah. and, and like that correlation goes to music. Yeah. Which yes. is why, why, you know, these kids are now sampling the shit that we grew up on, like the 90s. Right, 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 right. Same, We were just having, like, we what's were just the having this massive what? Summer Jam conversation a few weeks yeah. ago, right? Like, and I, I'm, I mean, I don't know how much East Coast guys you are, but Summer Jam used to be like... Everything. The, yeah. the end all, be all of hip hop concerts, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? And we was having a conversation just about like, all right. I knew I made it when I got invited to Summer Jam. It got, got to <laughs> be like, right, like... By the stage, yeah, like yeah, when I got those stage yeah. passes, yeah, I did. was like, "Oh, I, I'm oh, almost him. Landed, I'm, I'm him adjacent. It's like, right, I'm, I'm him adjacent. Like I was like, <laughs> this good, is crazy. You're good, you're good. <laughs> I got the catering. I was like, right. like literally, like your name bar, right here. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm looking up at the stage. Like, what's up, bro? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting close. No, but we was making that same. I'm sorry. I need, I need to go piss. Do we take a break? Right? Yeah, we go. We go. Russell's right there, bro. You good. You good. <laughs> we can keep this is this is exactly what I wanted. I'm like, this is yeah. we, nah, we can keep going. Like we can oh, yeah, go. Yeah, let's, let's go. go, man. Let's, let's lock in. Oh, It'll be all right. We-
you know, still so like, all right, so yeah, you, you brought up the whole thing about, you know, people receiving it or not understanding yep. or whatever the case is. Like, so when I saw I'm keeping funky with you. Please, bro. When I saw it, I'm like, what the fuck are these niggas doing? Yes, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. White Man Can't Jump was one of my favorite movies ever. And I'm yes. just looking at it like, why are they touching that shit? Yes. But he brought up a great point about the, you know, the nostalgia shit. So it's like, it gets people yes. talking. So I understand that. But was there a hesitation? When that role was presented to you on your desk, like, all right, we have this situation and we're going to reboot this movie, but yeah. you know how culturally impactful that shit was. Bro. And you know the conversation if that shit didn't go right. Bro, like, and, and I, why I'm actually grateful, because, like, a, a shout out to Saronis Jackson, because, like, he's, he's, not on, he's not on the mic right now, <laughs> but right he's here. one of my brothers and my That's friends, and, like, I know y'all know him. Great man right and there. And he knows me, like, I'm some, one, a person that runs towards shit. Like I'm very like, oh, it's a challenge. Like I'm gonna jump all the I'm way running in. Towards the fire. Yeah. So when I when I read it, I was like, like you guys, I was like, they really about to redo this. Shit. <laughs> like I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. But when it started becoming a reality that I was gonna be the guy to play Kamal, mm -hmm. my mind goes into combat mode. Yeah. Before it goes into like fear mode. It goes into like, okay, it doesn't even go into pressure. It just goes into like, let's lock in and activate. And I'll think about it later. Right. Right. Because I'm like, okay. The universe, God, all those forces b behind this thing have chosen me to tell this story, gotcha. to inhabit this character. And I really just look at it from that from that space. Like, this is no cap, bro. Yeah. And I'm genuinely like, all right, well, when I lock in, like, I'm going hard. That's why I would say stuff like, we know what we're up against. Yeah. Because for me, I understood our, us. I understood our voice of, like, what it was. Mm -hmm. But I was like, look, I, one thing you're not going to say is that I didn't come in 110 every day. Yeah. Right? Because I'm the audience. I'm your voices mm -hmm. going like, man, if we... If we don't, if we don't take this shit serious, we're screwed. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, look, this is what it is. And I remember going back and forth with my team about it, going like, okay, okay, we're really doing this, okay. Had conversation after conversation. With, I mean, me and Chuck got really close because I was just like, I had a notebook of questions. I was like, can we play this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, with or without me or anyone else, it had already been been green lit. With or without Jack, it already been green lit. It was going regardless. Mm. So if anything else, I was like, well, if I'm the guy to do it, let me make sure I honor it the best that I can. Gotcha. And like he's like Mel said, like leave it up to subjectivity of the art to say, do y'all receive it? I was I was surprised at how vast the audience was that ingested this movie that didn't watch the original. Right. Because right. I was sitting in conversations with people and they would go. No, nah, I haven't seen the original. I took it like blasphemous. I was like, what? Like, what the fuck? You haven't watched what? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, really real talk, but I not keep, understanding. I keep it tall, right? Like, there's certain movies that, like, I have a, a general understanding of. Yeah. But, like, if somebody tell me, oh, you didn't see every scene of fill in the blank class. Right, 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 right. Like, yeah, nah, like, I didn't watch that. Bro. Like, but not... white man can't jump, especially because we, yeah. all of us grew we up playing hooped. ball, bro. So yeah. it's not, we, like, I was like, okay, hoop <laughs> dreams. White man can't jump. Above so the here's, rim. So here's, here's another. Here's Above the, the rim. Yep. Here's a reason why I, I really I really dug the movie. Yeah. And, we'll, and we're going to talk the black, about the blackening right after this. So. And it's Walls. It's Walls. Because y'all got Wells up there, but it's Walls. It's Walls. Yeah. yeah. My fault. It's good. You're good. Thanks, sir. We'll get it. A joint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I really appreciated was that, like, yes, it's a ball movie, but it's really about, like, hustling. It's Facts. really about, like, you know, Facts. just figuring out a way, you know yes. what I'm saying? And, yes. French, and friendship. And in 2023, yeah. like, I feel like everybody in that movie, like, had the hustle. Yeah. And even, like, down to, like, the 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 fake sort of, like, Chris Brickley trainer yeah, 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 yeah. character. Which actually was supposed was to be Brickley. Was, I was about to say, was it really supposed so to be what act, So what ended up happening was that, you know, and shout out to Brickley, because Brickley was supposed to be there. He showed up professional uh -huh. and this is you guys gotta remember like we shot this at the at right at the tail end of covid protocol okay, okay. and so i think someone around brickley tested positive for covid Damn. so oh, that so day no literally Damn. that day that we're about to shoot the first so scene he couldn't, he couldn't. brickley couldn't do it like oh, literally saying, that no he was ready he was on set yeah Damn. and literally it was like can't, yeah can't man go. you can't come Test and i and we were all geek because obviously we know his history of so course, it was like yo course, this is gonna be fly but he that day that sucks. I think that I think them now knowing that them scenes would have been. I mean, I, I'd still enjoy and that happened a couple that times with other people that are supposed to be in the film where we were like that day they test like someone around, not even them. Yeah, because it was like one day where we shot and like the studio was so great, but someone that was like in my trailer, yeah, tested, tested positive, Damn. so we had to shut down that day. 
I was fine, thank but thank, thank God. God I was good. Speaking, speaking of shutdowns, I mean, damn, we we almost we almost went through that again in New York this week. Right? Yeah, with the, with the air quality, that, that was three days. Man, like, was, we, nigga, I was still outside. I was like, I, was I feel like y'all are like a testing ground for Wait. like like everything. I was about to say like, <laughs> like throw they, it to New York first. They if they make it, they use like a New York like a run. run. They get it. We're good. Of all the wild shit, right? Like, yeah. We got COVID first. You know what I'm saying? Look for real. We had the early mass protocols and all that. We had the early version of it. Oh, we fucked up. Um, the black. Uh, yes, comes go. out this week. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Like you said, it is a it is uh, more uh, a satirical sad, sad, yeah, sad time. Uh, yeah, than a yeah. spoof. And um, those tropes that I think really worked well in this movie, what, what I've saw this movie, is sort of the same sort of tropes that were established in not the same exact ones, but the ideas of having tropes and turn them on their head mm. is what made Scream so good the first time people saw it, The right? first one, yeah, the first one. The first one. time yes. Scream came out, it was like, okay, here's everything you think you know about this type of movie. Yep. We're going to turn that on its head and make sure, you know what I'm saying, I we need, keep I you guys. I need to watch Scream. At his end of, what's huh? up? I need to watch Scream. You've never watched Scream? Wait, hold on. Hold Whoa. On. That, look, look, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that's exactly what we talked about. <laughs> we were just having this conversation. Yo. <laughs> Good, come, when did Scream come out? So Scream, the, the like, original like, Scream. 97? Like 97? 96? See, it was probably until like 2002 before I was introduced to um, white cinema. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll feel you. <laughs> but this movie right here. This is literally a barbershop conversation. I mean, I, I, I listen to this. So you ain't never seen none of the Scream? This was nah, a movie. none of them. This, none of them. The first like white movie I saw, that I was like, nigga, this is hard. It's super bad. <laughs> Wait, what? Super, Super bad? bad? Oh, bro. I was like, like, Go, wait, wait, real quick. Hard. I thought Noah no and that, Melvin. Like, like, Noah and Melvin, Napoleon I thought he was about Dynamite? to say something else. I dead <laughs> ass thought he was going to be like, my first white cinema was like Schindler's <laughs> List. Like, I really <laughs> thought, like, <laughs> Mel was going to be like, yo. Wait, time out. So, was Super Bad like your introduction to like just white culture? White culture. Or white culture? so too. And culture in this, yeah, because, man, I'm going to be real. Be real. Anybody that's real can relate. But like where I grew up, I grew up around just really all black people. Like my yeah. elementary school, middle school, my mom was the whitest person I ever seen. Yeah. And like other than that, a couple of teachers, but I didn't, I wasn't engulfed in the culture. So mm. when I would watch movies, I would be confused for like the first thirty minutes because I'm thinking like this person is that person. <laughs> That's a real and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going they on. They all like, look the same. I thought he was just kidding. <laughs> I'm out. I'm over it because it was the lack of exposure to those um, right. that he was thinking. <laughs> So yo, it, yo, I want to list off like some white cinema movies. <laughs> and I tell you what I've seen. Please do it, bro. Please do it, bro. Here's the thing. My intro, my intro to white people comedy and entertainment was Back to the Future. Like mm. the way the way the way they would like call people like buttheads and shit. Like that was mm. my first time. I still ain't seen no, that. But it was the, I you didn't look at it as like white people. Nah, but I've seen the making of the movie. You don't even need. You don't even need to see. Uh, Back yeah. to the Future is such an ill movie. You don't I need to see it to understand right. its influence on it. Right? Yeah, yeah, we get that. We get that. Marty McFly. Super, we know super bad though, because like super Mick, bad is a that, classic that, too. That, that, that blended cultures. Man. Super bad is a classic too. I feel like that too. blended cultures. Have Man. you seen? Have you seen Clueless? Mm -mm. I know I, what it is because Stacey Dash is bad in it, right? She had like a young fan suit. She was bad in it. I remember seeing her. Bro, before we found out what Stacey Dash was about, like, yeah, she, she was, was it. We, we she was it. We got bad fans. She was it. Listen, before, yeah, yeah. before we had, before we needed to know about yeah, anybody's nah. personal shit, Stacey Dash, Cole. Cole. Stacey Dash and Robin Cole. Gibbons, bro. Cole. 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 Money. You know I mean? Stacey Cole. Dash Cole. and Robin Gibbons. Uh, the oh young Holly. Gosh, what other white I messed up though. Like you really like find out shit about people. He's like, well, yeah, it just, changes everything. It just don't yeah. hit. And then it kills some people for you rappers too. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't listen to your music. Right. I'm see you on. See, here, now yeah. we're going to a different conversation. Yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna dive into that. Nah, nah, we not. We not. We not. We already know what that is. General idea. We already know what that is. Nah, that's that's real though, man. We already know what that is. We was just having that conversation. Yo, welcome and to I the barbershop, bro. Nigga, I, I wish I, I wish this I could say the do. name. This is, this is what we do all fucking. I wish music, I could say the name. I was literally just having what, conversation. rappers. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not gonna say it. everybody who can relate to just that vague statement. Uh, know the names, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, from man. rap to R&B, we already know. Did you? Uh, we, yeah, we know exactly who we talking. It's something about. I heard like this week too. Like this week, son. That's it hurt my heart, bro. I don't want to do. Oh wait, no. Nah, who was? God, was it? Was it? I guess we could say some names, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You hear? You hear the new the, the new Dirk record? Well, the oh, new, uh, the, uh, the, the Dirk the, verse yeah, on uh, Drake's Search and Rescue. Uh, Search and Rescue. Yeah, yeah. Search and Rescue. yeah. yeah. And Kevin, then just, Kevin Gates ain't got nothing on yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> you know I eat that pee, put that old pee in the lean. Like my nigga, what? <laughs> 
I was like, like, nah, see why Drake let that shit off. I was like, yeah, that's why he's supposed to be like, Drake listened and was like, I respect his honesty. If that's what he on, if that's what he on, Kavisha said the same thing. I mean, listen, I mean, really too. It was like every thought don't need to be put out there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's a y'all come from a different generation, bro. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. I be hearing like. I heard like what Carisha said about just you know yeah. drink drinking <laughs> pee and shit. I'm just no, like y'all just it was, how, it no, was how other we, okay, fluids. Okay, so how we get here? It was other fluids. It was this little Dirk. This a rap combo. This little Dirk started. Right. Little Dirk started. Right. Little Dirk started. Was pee. I'm thinking of Glow Rilla. That was the other. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, Glow Rilla. Yeah, Glow Rilla said some crazy. Oh, Glow She said some crazy too. Come on, my fries. She said what? Come on, my fries and feed them to me. Look at his face. Hey yo. But I, this is wow. This is yeah, nah. wow. Like, what's that conversation? Like, I'm that's coming, I'm coming. Though? Grab no, the fries. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> definitely a level. No, wrap that up. No, yeah, yeah. I just want to see how y'all, I want to see how we tie this into the. Go, go, go. Give me the tie in. The illest tie in. Terrific. Q into horror films. Blacking it. June 16th. In theaters everywhere. How did you how did you guys feel? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what's like, what's, what's, movie, what's one of the best things y'all learned from making this type of movie and not wanting to have those stereotypes? Like what, what like it's one of the best things you learned from. I learned a lot. Um a lot of different relationships, new relationships to me that I gained that kind of helped my outlook and helped me grow. Um and also that we could just kind of I already knew before. It's something that I hope the industry learns from it, that you can have an all-black cast and you can have people that aren't on your list and these names, you know what I mean? You can creatively cast and get the people that's best for the role in that market stunt cast, um, that you can have an all-black cast in a horror genre and it be more entertaining than anything you've seen before, that we don't have to tap dance and shuffle, that we could be authentically ourselves and it still be appreciated by the outside world. A lot of times they feel like they got to water down and dilute our culture because it won't be marketable to people outside of us. But it's like, if you look at all of our art across from sports to music, it's, most, it's appreciated by everyone. You go to a little Dirk, we just talked about him concert, is a million little white kids out there jumping up and down and he not spoon feeding them the culture. And I feel like we can do that um, in cinema as well. And hopefully this movie would kind of set uh, um, a bar for for that, yeah, new foundation and knock them doors down for more. That's yeah, a really good point. No, question for you. No, I mean, I think that's the. I mean, honestly, he gave a beautiful answer, man. Is the opportunity for the expansion, right? The expansion for casting, expansion for what's marketable, expansion for what's profitable, yeah. right? And I think that at the end of the day, what we all have to consistently understand from from history, if we're looking at so many different established networks, from the UPN to CW to even right now, we are always on the pulse of culture. Renovation, mm -hmm. and we're also on the post of like revenue on the on the post of like revenue generation. Mm -hmm. mm. And so, at the end of the day, it's like when you when you create a new version of something, which shouldn't really be new. Even like going back to like that, the throwback to like the Hollywood Shuffle. It's like okay, you're creating a space where now we're just we're creating a new version of what's castable. Yeah, and it should just be consistent. Yeah, and it's and it's and it can be consistent in all versions of something. I love personally that it's always that it's coming out. Juneteenth weekend, and I was—I've been saying consistently, like I think Juneteenth weekend becomes a weekend, no, not unlike Fourth of July. Yeah, right? where where that's a slot that studios are fighting for. Yeah, and it's like, can we own Juneteenth weekend? Because yeah. that's where Did that's we win where, Juneteenth weekend. That's but, where it changes, right? Where right. not only we're just doing it culturally, but now studios are like, this is where money is definitely going to be spent. Right. Like, Correct. you know what I'm saying? Because as much as we want to do everything. For the right reasons, yes. a lot of things don't move unless they move well, for happens. these reasons. Yeah, revenue, you know move, revenue moves. So we got to support that Correct. type of shit, Correct. too. You know what I mean? So, um, I want to I ask a question. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're talking about, like, you know, the horror, you know, brand, that, yes. that, that genre. Uh, I'm sure people have seen the movie beforehand. Yes. You know, directors, actors. Has yes. anybody in the horror genre reached out to you guys or, like, giving you advice or just, like, reacting to it? Consistently. And I think, like, at least from the interviews that we've been doing now and also in the beginning when we all went to TIFF, yeah. all the interviews, it, what I loved was like the the the, the acceptance of it, gotcha. right? And and I love like how, because there is this infusion of humor, humor and people that really ingest horror, they do it from a totally different POV than just being scared. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Like they really break stuff down just from a from a very analytical, artistic level of did you hit this? Did you play these tropes? And they love that yeah. we're flipping the tropes. They love the humor that's in it. Gotcha. And at least for me, like I'll let Mel answer too, but like at least for me, 
it has been so culturally supportive in the horror community. Like, and when we've done interviews, like they get on excited. Mm. And they're like, oh man, I like this. And I love that it was funny. And I love this. And it was crazy. And they and genuinely, regardless of of, of color too, they have loved it, bro. Everyone that's seen it has really been yeah, it's, to where I feel like for all of us, we feel this 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 like like this simmering of like what's this weekend gonna hold? Yeah. yeah. And we kinda like, okay, I think we might be locked in. I think it's gonna yeah. okay. We just gonna see what happens, but I do believe it's gonna it's gonna hit. So I think yeah. we spoke we spoke earlier in the conversation about like IPs and like creating new ones, right? Yeah. And the success of this and especially in, in the horror genre always begets like sequels and like doing more yeah, of this yeah, type of yeah. stuff, right? Like this is kind of where these things start, right? Mm-hmm. When it comes to all the folks that are sick of seeing people in remakes and stuff, right. <laughs> it becomes not just going on uh creating something that is culturally relevant for the genre, but culturally relevant for people that look like us as yes. well. I love what, and I also want to throw back too, like what Mel was saying about not stunt casting. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I think that's something that overall we have to continue to do in our casting as black people. I think when you see a lot of other stories being told by a lot of different cultures and colors, they don't have a problem casting who they feel like is the right artist for the job. Right. But sometimes we feel pressured to make sure we cast people that we say we know their name, we know their face, but we're not requiring acting. We're not requiring performance. So one of my favorite things, like and him bringing it up again, was the fact that like Tim was very emphatic about the fact mm-hmm. that I want to cast the right people for the job, yeah. and I'm not, I don't care if I know you're so popular in music, but you've never shown me you can act, and I'm gonna do that because maybe it's gonna bring audience because that doesn't hit. So the fact that we're getting this 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 fire right now underneath us where people are excited, but it's like yo, he went and got the people that he felt like played the right role. I want that to be inspirational too. And we and we know we know there's going to be huge <laughs> success with this movie. Yeah. We know we know it's going to be there. So, and I need you to watch the Scream series. So I just need you to watch that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you don't need to watch. You don't need to watch the series. Just I'm, I'm, no, first, I'm looking at first. The first. The first. I'm looking. The first. The homie Samara Weaving's in the last one. She played my wife in so much. So I definitely who? Who? Samara who? Weaving. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in the last one. I, I definitely know they support just her. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at it right now. So on the screen in front of me, they got the what's that? Six Scream movies. And I see one black face <laughs> on six posters. That is insane. We should be, and then with the blackening, we should have like six blacklings and just like one white so face. I was, I was expecting y'all to have a token in the movie. Right. Right. So and that's what white. I was going to ask. Like, you ain't get to that part. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I was going to ask. That's like, it. do y'all see this becoming a franchise? Do y'all see this becoming, you know, blackling one, two, three, four? Like, do you see it stretching out? I feel like but, it could, and I feel like if, if it, it does, we we're still if it make money. Up. Yeah, they gonna run that. Sh- they gonna run it to the ground. They gonna do a black and an eight, and none Yo. of us gonna be in it. Yo. <laughs> it's, I ain't mad at it. I feel like at six though, like you know how. Yeah, at six. I probably would be like, hey, guys, all right, like, all right, all right, enough, <laughs> enough. I'll support from the Bro, sideline. Right. They're gonna be there. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna bring us back in 2050. We're gonna be old. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like a. Uh, the blackening yeah. holiday. Yeah. <laughs> the blackening Christmas. A, a copycat dude gonna come and oh, try to tell my kid. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, wait. So we finally got our, no, our, our co-host. Rosie, get in here. Let's let's shoot the Rosie. Get in here, Rosie. God damn. Come on, step let's, in. Let's, step let's in. get into it. So, sorry in. for the tardy. How you doing? That's Rosie. That is AR. That's our co host. Uh, let's go. He's the co host. Let's get right to <laughs> They're the co hosts. They ain't feeling in for you. They're they doing a good. This is definitely full. Job. This is the most full couch we've ever had. This is like Does it feel like one of those type of movies? Nah, just like, don't up, do that. Yeah, don't yeah, do shut that. Up, shut up, shut up. We would never. <laughs> we would never. God damn it. What? Yo. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he just I got, got it. Bro, he just, I, I tried to look like a girl. Wait, what, what, I tried to let that shit sail out of bounds. I typically go there first. I got a bed for the doubt. Until I see his face. I see my face. I was like this. I was like, yo. I was like, yo. Let that shit black out of that shit sail out of bounds. Oh. I'm hoping nobody I'm caught that. Yes. 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 Out of bounds, like, please. Wait, what? The black and evil. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. no, no, no. If you can't tell, Rosie's inappropriate all the time. That's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. clearly, clearly. God damn. I mean, honestly, we the same complexion, so we we, we yeah. good. We good over here. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. definitely the first. No, no, no. Now we still. Sharona's will have something to say. 
<laughs> oh, damn, y'all. That, there's a lot of high I yellow would, I would in there. That's, that's, that's the only yeah, it's usually not this much high yellow on the show. Pull somebody yo. from the right, yeah. Do you want to hop in here? You want to hop in here? Imagine if I said that. Imagine if I was like, it's dark as hell on that side. Can we get some more lighting over here? Can we turn that shotgun light over here? That's how I grew up. Nigga, smile. Open your eyes so we can see. You did just say that. Y'all understand? Oh, I did. My bad. Open your teeth. We don't go pull some people from off the street. Like, bro, we need numbers over here. This is what I get. Y'all niggas out there playing kickball. <laughs> 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 All right, see. God damn. Right, Yo, it, the, it, finals, the finals might be over tonight, Lo. Uh, uh, I, I think it might, be, might be. It might be over it tonight. Might be. I don't Nigga, know. It's three nah, it's over. It's Listen, over. It's, it's over tonight. I lost a lot of money betting against playoff Jimmy, bro. I lost a lot of money. Anytime I'm like, yeah, it's a wrap for these niggas. Wait, didn't you bet for every him though time? now? He has not shown up. No, I thought I thought they were gonna win game four. Yeah, I thought yeah. they were gonna win game four. Yo, Jimmy Butler, Stephen A. Smith made a great point today on first day. He's yeah. like, yeah, bro, like he's a star. He's not a superstar. He's not been performing. You can't build a team around him. You, I mean, you can, but like not he's not giving you a reason. I saw that. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not giving you a yeah. reason. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jimmy Butler. I love the man, bro. Love the man. Call him Jimmy Buckets. But, man, the game ain't getting no buckets. He was he's down three. He <laughs> was on. The, he's you on. Get his name bro, you better get buckets tonight. <laughs> you better get his name right. Right. He is very <laughs> dog. Like there was so many times during the playoffs, I'm like, these motherfuckers ain't this good. Can I? Can I? Can, <laughs> I, can, I, can I say one thing? Right. 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 I'm like watching Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, all these dudes that wasn't even. And which one? In which uh, series? Uh, uh, every series. I'm a Nick fan. I'm a, I'm a Nick fan, so, so I, I got I got to see this up close and personal. Right. right. Yeah. We got up to the second round. I'm thinking, I'm like, all right. I'm like, J Brunson hooping, Randall. Nah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm thinking it's gonna be. Yeah. We're gonna be all right. It's yeah. gonna be a tough series. These no name: Gabe Vincent, Max Strews, Duncan Robinson. Uh, what was the other dude? The High Tower. Yes. All these, yes. all these guys ne never drafted none of this. Every time they keep going, they kept going in, a, in another series. I'm like, bro, they're not this good. Like, the, the, I'm like, they got to the Celtics. I'm yes. like, all right, Celtics are going to bring them down to yes. earth. I'm like, yes. all right, it's finally going to happen. But they're, 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 and they they're, almost did. They're eight seed. They're, and they almost blew it. They're a playing team. Yeah. Right? So they're not really like, they went through the Bucks. Yeah. yeah. Giannis got injured. Yeah. yeah. They was Giannis willing themselves. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they was the willing themselves forward. Right. Celtics crap. I mean, the yeah. next game a little. Stop. The game was a little. Stop. 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 What were you gonna say? That's what I was gonna say. When you when you watch like we all watch basketball. Yeah. Think about it, we all played basketball. Yeah. yeah. And you know every year. Not correct. Uh, well, you look like you did. Oh shit. Yeah, right, I was cool. gonna. I was just gonna. <laughs> but, it's, it's, it's the butt. It's the butt. It's by, by osmosis. It's Ro the Ro Ro Rosie knows who. Right. 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 But it's like you watch a team and you know when they peaked. Yeah, and so when I was watching the series with before before they got to now, I said this is it. Yeah, like they you peaked. can just tell. And, and when you watch, it's not that Jimmy's doing bad; it's just that Jimmy is done. Like and he's, he's bro, tired. He's ever, tired. Ever since ever that's, since this, that's what it is. He's ever tired. since this, all right. Let's not even talk about Miami. Let's just talk about. Denver, like yo, that's all. That was yo, that was my that's that was my, but that's any team. That was like, my segue. How do you match up with? No, no, no. no. Yeah, it, it, Denver it, it, can make it. That was my segue. That's my segue. I don't think Denver could come back. Oh, you tripping? I'm probably you tripping. Because you teams reach a peak, bro. Joe, remember he said it first. Listen, I don't think Denver's coming back next year. All I'm saying, you don't think they're coming back next year? I don't think Denver's coming back. I think Denver's getting bounced in the in the conference finals next year. Against who? Against whoever they're playing. Yeah, first off, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this. Wait, by the by the time this comes out. Bet on it and come back next year. We're gonna put it right. We're gonna put it right. We're gonna put it. They like, they like no. 15 oh, and 4 in the playoffs. No. Like, who gives <laughs> them a shot? Wait, we better They've lost four right. games oh. this entire playoff. Right. Right. <laughs> They've lost one what? series out of the whole season. The only time they lost two games, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant had to play like. Batman and like lights out. Yeah, they Devin lost Booker four was having like Jordan like nights playoffs. just to stay competitive against these dudes, bro. Like they barely got eliminated by four teams. They, they got bought four into losses? a culture right now, and they have a great energy. And teams can have a teams like can have a wave and a rise, and they can also crash. I gotta be honest, yo. Can I be honest? Talk can I be me. honest? Why do we? We always. We this podcast is brought to you by American Express. Being an Amex member means I'm always looking forward to game day, no matter who's playing. Whether it's my team getting myself stressed out and, and going crazy and yelling at the TV, or going to the game and just getting into the atmosphere with the craziest fans in the world. Before I get in there, though, I always got to grab me a little bite, get me something to eat to calm my nerves down, get me a little drink, drink, and then as soon as I get into my seat, all bets are off. 
but I can't do that without getting in with the Amex first. With American Express, you are a member when every day is game day. American Express, don't live life without it. Mondays, 8, 7 Central on VH1, Black Ink Crew is back-to-back and united in ink on Monday nights. First on Black Ink Crew New York, with Caesar leaving the shop, Puma steps up to lead and rebuild their legacy, while Ted works to secure his own. Bay sets up her own shop, while Rock and Crystal rethink marriage. Then on Black Ink LA, Kat is preparing to birth a new shop in Beverly Hills and a new baby. Meanwhile in Compton, KP's dreams of ink and music seem to be fading and having it all is harder than ever. With group dynamics shifting and revelations changing relationships, can OGs and new artists create as a unit? Two cities, one night, united in ink. Black Ink Crew, New York and Black Ink Crew LA, all new Mondays at 8, 7 Central on VH1. He always use a lot of words. He just walked he go, Yeah, he got to go take a piss. Like, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, is he bad? We well, use, we sorry about, we're we use, sorry. Come back. Right, right, we right. use a lot of weird words when it comes to describing, like, Jokic, right? right because, right. like, he don't look the part. Right. Right? Like, right. he's right. not a superstar. No, like, no, 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 no. Listen, he doesn't beam a superstar. He doesn't beam, like, a household name. He doesn't beam that. Can I say what I think everybody else is afraid to say about Nikola Jokic, Joe? He's nice. No, like, I think we know he's nice. One of the best. I think I think people just he's just not cute. Right. <laughs> he don't have like, he's he don't he's not sexy, he's yo. Not sexy. Like he hold don't on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's hold on. just not a sexy dude. I have a question. What does that have to do with anything? Everything, yo. You think I people think, are scared to say that? You don't think I, everything, you don't think bro? Women been bashing him since. No, here's the thing. If Nikola Jokic, <laughs> if anybody, we know he's ugly. That's the thing. That's why he's not. We know he's ugly. That's why people don't look at him like that. I feel like good looking hoopers don't look at him. Who people is, don't, who is, who people is don't want to acknowledge that? that the fact that this dude is not sexy is the reason why he's not a household wait, name. And then wait, when he speaks, wait, 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 what did I walk into? Nigga, LeBron wait, is sexy. Wait, 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 wait. No, we said Can't, he's not. I know, listen, but I'm on, saying on, LeBron on, ain't sexy. He's ugly too. Listen, hold on, hold on. the reason why. Oh, you think LeBron is cute? That's the crazy. reason why, bro. That's, that's why you got his beard. That's what a lot of people are what, low key saying. Because the numbers don't lie. If you just do a blind test, just wait. If you do a blind test on this and this dude's numbers, he's the he's one of the best. Ever. Yeah. Right. Jordan, what does Q have Kobe, to do with it? Yeah. Why'd you say that? Because the way, the way the Jordans and the Kobe's did it was a so pretty think, way of doing it. You think Jordan and Kobe Q? was Q? The way, bro, so tight? The way that the, I mean, the way the dude play, e, but the way the dude play basketball was beautiful to watch. Yo. Oh, you talking about him on the court, uh, not his, uh, his not that, his, and but that too, y'all like, putting his face up. And he's not a good looking dude. He's, he's Serbian like, Q. You don't yeah, know what they go for over there. That, yeah. That's the only reason why he's, he's not, not even Serbian Q. He's the Q. only reason why no, the entire world does not know this man's name, bro. That's 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 Q, bro. That's he's a big man, and like you said, his game is. You see, you see it, bro. Kaz, like, I'm just gonna say something real quick. Just be, why can't we just have just, this no, honest no, no, combo? Because I want to know why you brought up wait, wait, looks. No, he should have three MVPs right now. Wait, the wait, reason wait, why he doesn't have three is he got, he got two. What, bro, he should have got one this year, too. He probably should have, but sometime around January, they went to Joel February, and Beach. You think he cute? He's not cute either. Sometime around January, February, there's very few like, cute men in the I NBA. I think he just don't like white men. I can name him, it's like three. What happened? There's only like three cute I, men I, in the I, NBA. I, I just, I just, wanna, I, just I said wanna, I just, initially I just, no, no, when I, I said wanna, I, know, I, I was talking about his game being being aesthetically pleasing. Y'all just, no, no, yes, no, no. Y'all just pulled up his head. I don't understand because Kaz has been talking about sports for years and he's very good at it. He knows his ins and outs. He knows the, the p's and q's. Yes, and yeah, 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 yeah. I never. But this is a, uh, no, no. This is a very. I, no, no. <laughs> I never thought. <laughs> It would come to this day where you say an NBA game is not his game is not his cute. game is not cute, and bro. I don't think anybody but like on the face uh, of this <laughs> earth is thinking, yo, his game isn't cute. I think a lot of people are actually like Stephen A. Smith is. You not know what saying I'm saying? That. No, no, you I'm know saying. what I'm no saying. No one knows what you you're saying. You understand what I'm saying, though? Well, she does. I think Shaq. <laughs> yeah. Shaq has an ugly game. Like, it's it's brutal. Ugly. Like, what's, his game was just brutal. So what's like, the point? Brutal. What are you, what are you, what are you the point? What is your point? I'm talking about, all right, what I'm what's talking about. Point? You let me get my point out, motherfucker. By tonight, he might be the new NBA champion. Oh, he's going right? to be cute? Might be. The, let me finish talking, motherfucker. Right. He should be the face of sports, right? Like, right. if this was Braun, if this was Curry, Curry last Ducky year. Curry was never the face of sports. A, understood, but I'm just saying. 
Dirk Nowinski was in the face of sports. Oh, I think that I think that one year Dirk was pretty like he no, was, no, he wasn't. Dirk. He was never like LeBron levels, but that one that one you lost finals this, you they lost, won. You lost this argument. I lost this. Yeah, you lost. I think it's his. Style I'm of crazy. Play, I think it's his style of play because I also think like the fact like when we talk about these guys, yeah, we talk about Kobe, we talk about Jordan, yeah, and again I'm not Dr. J going all the way back. Yeah. The way that they played the game was on a on a higher level. Right. We talk about was Jokic, it cute? It was it, not to say I, I, I finesse. You know what, finesse. Finesse. Me personally, That's me it. personally, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a massive They're fan guards. of Jokic. I think he, I think the, I think how he plays the game is incredible to watch because I love watching, right. like, right. I'm a hoops nerd. Like, how you manipulate defenses at yes. that height yeah. and all yeah, that course, shit course, is incredible to watch. And when he can't and when he can't do nothing else, he just steps back and just fucking chucks that shit from 40 feet and can hit it, right? But what big has been cute? That's what I want to know. Big man. What big man? I don't know. What big man is I mean, and B plays a little, he plays a little he plays obvious. He plays a little finesse. He's just he's just clumsy when he falls over. I can't believe I'm indulging in it, but like if I have to answer the question, Hakeem okay, Hakeem is boys. Hakeem Hakeem had a good look at Paul's game. The five No. What's big? Five or four big. You gotta tell me what big is five. Y'all know what I was talking about. I was getting to, Dave. No, no, let's go ahead. Yeah, so so who of these big men? Have been the superstar that you feel like Jokic isn't. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, that's I don't super, think he's not a superstar. But I no, think, no, I the, just think the, the caliber of respect. I guess you're saying that he's not yeah. getting yeah. what big man has gotten. That. Yeah. That's the, that's a good. That's a good question. So, so I mean, I, I, I think I personally is not as flashy. But bro, I personally look, think look, he's yeah, had as great a year as any big man ever since Shaq. I think right. since the 01 Shaq year, mm-hmm. when they won, when they, I think they only lost one finals game, and that was the Iverson game, when he Iverson went for 40-whatever yeah. yeah. drops to Ron Lou. Like yep. I think there's been no big man who has straight up just walked through the finals like he has that is true. So, in this final. So what do you, no, I, I agree. So what do you think he should be getting that he's not getting? No, I just, I don't think he's not getting anything. I just think it's going to be interesting to see what comes after this. Like, now that... He gets the if he gets the championship tonight. Yeah. yeah. Like, is he going to be covered like a Shaq? Is he going to be covered like is an Embiid? Is, is he going to be covered is, like is he a Giannis? Serbian man and, playing? And also, <laughs> it's also you got to look at what Mark is. Maybe he plays for Denver. Like, that's not as yeah. sexy as L.A. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, York. nobody watching that in the Denver is not games. Cute. Do you yeah. think Denver, Denver? I think I think they kind of made it work Nuggets? for Giannis. Like, they kind of made it work for Giannis though. That's not. It's not a marketable city. They kind of made it work for Giannis though. He's in Milwaukee, and like he's still a pretty. I mean, granted, he's got his own signature shoe and that helps a lot but yeah. like he's become pretty a pretty big household Jokic, name now. Like, off the off the strength of, of what you're talking about too i think why also people are kind of sleeping on Jokic is because he was a second round pick yeah like, Giannis was a first round pick <laughs> that yeah. is true Elijah no that, was that's a first true round pick Shaq was obviously a first round that's pick. true no coming out of LSU. that's true i think we still kind of saw Giannis coming him. even though even though even when Giannis was a little like yeah but he was a first round pick he was a first round pick Jokic wasn't even really supposed to like play more than like a role. Right. He was right. drafted to be a role player. Yeah. And then he became this thing. Jimmy was drafted. Jimmy Butler was drafted last pick of the first round. Yep. He becomes this thing. Yeah. I think that stigma is why people are still like, we don't buy it. Right. You're not, you're We're not, not going to accept person. it yet. Yeah. And right. it's international too. Is like, and even of our culture, like a lot of our culture of sports is still like the culture. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they not right. really, they not. <laughs> they're not talking they're about yoga. He's, yeah. he's Serbia. We don't even know where that's set on the map. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, we don't know how to. That's why I was like, is it going to be uncomfortable when they win tonight? So I to think, like publicize the Serbian man at I think the, we all, of the NBA? I think we all appreciate his, his craft. Why don't put Michael Porter Jr. on the cover? <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> like, we are not that doing that. Yeah. I mean, Jamal, but Jamal Murray doing this. Jamal Murray could possibly be there too. Jamal Murray is doing this thing. Someone else on the cover. <laughs> nah. Who are, who are NBA 2K 20, 23, 24? Nobody. Who's on the cover? Wait, what happened? Who's on the cover of, of um, 2K, 2K next year? 2K next year? Not him. Michael, Michael, Michael Jokic? Not him. Let me tell you. Uh, he's going to be... Jokic is going to be unstoppable. They can't do... Jokic is going to be a cheat code. If you would have asked me, if you would have asked me this time last year, know how to say who? I, say, I would have said Ja. Oh, Ja. Yo, I would have said Ja this time last year. Nah, nah, I said I would have been, ja, been an easy one nah. this time last year. Now? 
Nah. Nah. There's a no. Oh, that's the other shit that's Ooh. supposed to drop after the five. That's the, that's the real oh, drop. That announcement? Yeah. yeah, Adam Silver waiting Bro, to drop I out see like a new album. Like, yo, yo, after yeah. the finals. I'm, I'm going to announce that's what I'm going to do. Bro, I, I appreciate how Adam Silver um, answered. I don't know if y'all watched it when Stephen A was like, yeah, yeah. Stephen A was setting him up. It was like, you know, you're not just making a, a, a statement for him. You make an example for the whole NBA of what we don't accept. I'm yeah. like, damn, you trying to throw a book at him. I mean, and then Adam Silver was like, nah, this isn't about, you know what I mean, representing the whole entire NBA. This is a specific case and we'll treat it yeah. as such. Yeah. I'm like, damn, Stephen A really try to get him. Yeah. I mean, I mean as he's supposed to. You know what? Mm-hmm. Stephen A, I mean, you make an job. example out of him? Like, god damn. He does his job, but like, well, he's, well, he's well, also yeah, doing the, know. he also likes doing the, I'm going to speak for this sort of people that right, right, ask right. you this question, but I can't. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask him for it. You know what I'm saying? Practice. So, Kaz, real quick, I want to uh, I want to bring it back to the black name. Yeah, quick, let's do that. Okay. I just want, I just, you know, for people that don't know you guys, right? I have never seen any acting, any content. Yeah. What do you want people to take away from y'all roles in this movie particularly Ooh. that that don't know you guys from a whole movie? That just like the horror genre, just yeah. third, but they see you guys. What do you want them to take away from this? I'm going to let Melvin answer first, and I'm going to put um, it on Ooh. Light skin privilege? <laughs> <laughs> you can never just be serious uh, for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well, go ahead, Melvin. Um, I... I feel like this movie typically in a horror tropes you get one black person. You don't really get a chance to know them because they they gone quick. And you really don't get a chance to really know who they are because you're not going to see the true essence of who we are until we're amongst each other. It's mm-hmm. a different convo mm-hmm. than when we outnumber and we're in a room full of, you know what I mean, mixed company. Mm-hmm. So you, you get to see a unapologetically pure, authentic version of black people and not just one type of black person you get. You know what I mean? It's a... Is a, is a spectrum of us. We're all black. You know what I mean? That's the through line for this movie. It's like, who's the blackest? You can't quantify blackness. We're mm-hmm. not a monolith. We, we come in all shapes, so, colors, complexions. You know what I mean? Uh, different backgrounds. We got different interests. And we still, you know, all black. And that's something to embrace, but also not to be um, weaponized, in a sense, amongst each other. But also, I, I, I want you to see these characters as people. You know what I mean? As friends who bind together, unify to survive. Um, and shout out to Tracy and Dwayne. They they rounded out these characters um, in a way where you really see who they are. There is is nuances to who they are. Like my character was somebody who's seen as a thug, which is a trope that's typically taken in these movies, especially when we're tokens. Mm-hmm. But you really don't get to see who I am and why I am that way and who I've grown grown to become. Like, okay, maybe he was a thug in college, but now we're looking at him you know, 10 years later, and who who has he grown into? Yeah. Um, and who does he want you to see him as? So, I mean, that's that's going deep into the character. I just hope you watch it and enjoy it. But those conversations that's going to come afterwards is what I'm excited to see surrounding all in which I just spoke of. Love. Yeah, I like that. No, bro, listen, I mean, and that's, I mean, like I said, I was going to piggyback off of it because I think it just really sets the platform mm-hmm. for the convo. But I really hope the same thing. I hope people really walk away Number one, from a creative point of view, knowing what we can do when we all come together. Because the thing that we discuss, and I don't want to be lost, is that this was an indie film. This was something that we all came together to make because we all wanted, we believed in the story, we believed in the script, we believed in Dwayne and Tracy, and we were like, yes, we wanted to work with Tim's story. So collectively, it was a lot of people in front of the camera of color and black. It was a lot of people behind the camera of color and black, and we all came together in one uniform voice saying, we want to make this something successful. And then it succeeded, right? So it was like, crowd crowdfunding like mm-hmm. it wasn't like a oh we if the studio instantly said yes the studio said yes because they saw what we believed in yeah. and then they became advocates for us in a more financial capacity and i want people to know like number one you can do so much when you join yourself together with your people don't hate on each other mm. and really support each other and you walk away number one i mean of course i want people to watch it all weekend make us number one please support us and have that conversation after but really take away the essence of the fact that when we all come together right just like in this room right now, we're, we're way more powerful. And we actually have a pulse on culture and revenue and all those kind of things. And we don't have to always say like, it's, it can only be just me. Right. But it really can be all of us. And that's why the colors of all of us represented means like, okay, we can make this become successful together. So I really just hope people understand and take away that. And, and, don't, and, and don't wait for an opportunity. Facts. You know what I mean? This is an independent film done by an independent studio before Lionsgate came in. They saw the beauty in it and you know what I mean, um, bought it at the festival and, you know, yes. did a great job distributing and marketing it. But in the beginning, it was it was an independent film. Yes. We didn't get paid 
much money. Like we lost money. You know what I mean? Doing this movie, it was a labor listen, of love. Ubers, like you, because... like you gotta understand. Like at the time, <laughs> like listen. No, I'm trying to be real with you. Like at the time, they were laughing me because I was living in downtown LA and we shot like in like Brentwood, Malibu. Yeah. So just to get that, I'm like, just man, I, I'm, I'm bro, calling Tim. This shit like, better work. Tim, listen, man. I know my call time is 6 a.m., but traffic yeah. is a, is going. I'm gonna get there. I'm in, a, right. I'm in a Uber. I'm Maybe. in a Uber X going to set like. Dude telling me how he flocking in the neighborhood that we riding through, and I'm trying to keep my face down. Yeah. Like, don't want this nigga to recognize me. He just picked me up from the house. Like, I'm in the car. He like, hey, yo, hey, hey, homie. Like, this neighborhood crazy. I should ride through here. Niggas used to leave their doors unlocked. I should just go check your doors. And I'm thinking, this nigga just picked me up from the house. Like, I'm in this Uber X. He like, bro, what you doing? I was like, nigga, I don't even know. The homie just gave me this job. I'm just showing up to help out. Hey, look, what really killed me, right, when I first got in the car, he was like, nigga, you watch Snowfall? And I was like, I'm like, nah. Like, nah, my nigga. I got nausea, man. <laughs> Keep my nigga, they don't see me. You know where I live. You talking about like, oh. but it's just to speak to. I'm in an Uber X going through this to get to work because it's something, it's something I believed in. And I'm I'm happy that it came to this. You know what I mean? It's the labor of love, but it's yeah, sometimes the shit we gotta go through. Man, boy? Nigga, yo, huh? nigga, what you done to be able to turn around, man boy? That's you? Bro, I don't know what I would have did. I don't know what you I would have did. Out the car I would have like changed my address to like up the street and then had another car pick me up. No, nah, that's crazy. We, like we missed. A, well, I hope we do this again, man. Because one of the nah, funniest yeah, stories was like when we was actually working out, like like the chain gang. We was working out in Brentwood yeah. on the side of the road, lifting weights. I had weights in the back of my trunk. And so one Yo. time we would just start lifting weights outside and our producer comes out and he's like, uh, so the neighbors are worried. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and mind you, will you, will no, you? Like that's listen, awesome, man. Outside, bro. I was about to say like, not for nothing. Black men lift the weights outside. Hey, like, and when you, right. when you see the movie, Very intimidating. And, 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 you see what Sin, and you see what Sin Qua is wearing, his wardrobe for the movie is a jump. Is a is a jumper, a jumper. Yeah. with a wife beater. So oh. imagine him on the side of the road oh, with his no. jumper tied around his waist with his wife beater. Immediately <laughs> concerned. <laughs> Yo, Kaz, I, I think it's, it's about that time we wrap up. These these gentlemen oh, have to yeah. get on the road. So Black and loud, guys. One more time for Melvin Grace and Paul Wall. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for pulling up right here. Say less, uh, low. What you all? Uh, I mean, goddamn, the blackening out this week. Make sure you see it in yeah. theaters. Uh, by the time you see this podcast, in theaters right now, go yeah. buy a ticket. Don't and, stream and, that and, joint. And one, go thank, to a theater and watch it, man. Thank you guys for pulling up, and also so, just proud of the work that you guys are putting in. Uh, you, we already know that this this is gonna set y'all up for a bigger stage. So proud of y'all. This is this is beautiful to watch. Um, just seeing how dedicated y'all are yeah. to the appreciate process. It, you know what I mean? So. We yeah. appreciate it. Always loving seeing black men just do what they do. That's right. <laughs> That's right. No matter how big I get, when I'm a mega star, I'll come back over here and say what's up. Man, y'all, y'all. <laughs> hey, yo, we, got, hey, we got that. We got that. We, we, got, we got everybody. All right, man. Yeah. Rosie, take us home. I'm going to come with that. Take us where? I'll take us home. You take us home. Oh, that's right. I anyway, know. Like, I bring us in, but I wasn't here. Yeah, sorry. Here. That's true. Anyway, right, you know right. what time it is. Like we always do. Is time, uh, uh, like we always do with this time. Stay <laughs> safe. Stay free. And always <laughs> say less. See you next tried week, hard, people. Miami. You tried hard, Miami. Oh, yeah. By the time this comes out, damn, Miami. <laughs>